Hey, welcome back to the channel. So recently I did a video on this little guy. It's a 2012 MacBook Pro, and I showed you how to install macOS Ventura on it using OpenCore Legacy Patcher. Now I'll put a link up in the corner and down in the description if you wanna check out that tutorial. But since I did that, I've been doing all kinds of testing on here. I've tested various pieces of hardware that's on the computer. I've tested some software, and then I've tested some macOS specific functionality. Some is from previous versions of macOS, and some of that is uh, new in Ventura. So I wanted to talk about how all that stuff performs and how this MacBook Pro 2012 performs with Ventura. So let's kick this off by talking about the hardware on the computer. First, we'll talk about the two USB ports and they work fine. I hooked all kinds of peripherals up from storage to mice to game pads, all kinds of stuff. Everything worked just fine, as does the Thunderbolt 2 and mini display port. That works fine as well. I've hooked up uh, some peripherals to that and I've also used it to hook to external displays with a mini display port to HDMI adapter and that worked just fine. That's actually how I'm doing some of the screen capturing for this video. Ethernet port is working fine. I had it hooked up for you know a day or so, using it the entire day off of the ethernet, not Wi-Fi, just to make sure I wouldn't get any dropouts and I didn't. I was getting full speed out of this ethernet connection and uh, it got my IP address very quickly and maintained it through the day. So that works perfectly as does the headphone jack. It, functions like a headphone jack as you would expect. But again, I didn't have any crackling or audio problems. Uh, it just, it worked just fine. SD card reader worked great. I shot some footage on this camera and brought it into this uh, laptop to do some testing in DaVinci Resolve and Final Cut Pro. I'll get to that in a little bit, but that uh, worked just fine too. I had no problem mounting the SD card and copying my footage off. And the last thing is the Super Drive or the CD DVD drive. Uh, that works too. Uh, I don't have much <laughs> CDs and DVDs anymore, but I was able to scratch some up and did some testing with both and uh, it seemed to work just fine. Even though this computer is 10 years old now, it pulled the disc in, read the data and ejected it and uh, everything worked fine. I didn't have any read issues or anything. I did not try writing with it though, but the reading worked just fine. Now there's one more port on this computer and that is the FireWire port. I don't have any FireWire peripherals, so I have no idea if that's working. If anybody does have one and you've done this process, please leave that down in the comments section below and let us know if that port is working because I know there's still a few video studios that do use FireWire devices. Now moving up to the top and the iSight camera, uh, it works just fine. These cameras are not great, but it worked in FaceTime and also works in OBS and other ca capture software. So no problems there. It works just as it does in other versions of the OS, as does the keyboard, keyboard, trackpad, everything works fine. All the function keys at the top of the keyboard work great and the brightness is uh, configurable, the backlighting comes on, you can change the levels just as you would expect, no issues there at all. Last two things are Wi-Fi and Bluetooth. Both of those work fine. The Wi-Fi connection connects very easily and maintains that connection. I didn't have any dropouts or anything. And the Bluetooth does work, but this is one area that uh, kind of shows the age on this computer. It uses older Bluetooth, so it's not very energy efficient. And some of the functionality of uh, Mac OS relies on a solid Bluetooth connection. So some of the uh, items that we're gonna talk about in a little bit suffer because of that other older Bluetooth that's in here, but there is a way to upgrade the Wi-Fi and the Bluetooth. I may do a video on that. I've mentioned that before and a couple people wanted it. So I think I'm gonna do an upgrade video on how to upgrade the Wi-Fi and the Bluetooth, but with just the stock one, they both work, but there are some limitations with the Bluetooth that's built into these computers. And last two things I wanted to talk about hardware wise are using an external display. Uh, I kind of already mentioned this, but I use a mini display port to HDMI adapter that hooks into the computer and into my monitor. So I'm able to drive an external monitor, no problem. And it does work well. Now, before we move on to the next section, if you're finding this video useful, please consider subscribing and hitting that notification bell. These videos take me a long time to put together and that's a great way to let me know that you appreciate it and also get notified when I put up more videos like this.
All right, so the next section here is talking about some of the built-in functionality on the software side in macOS, and we'll start with iCloud, and this is for the drive and the sync and all that kind of stuff. iCloud works just fine. This is not a like a Hackintosh where you have trouble signing into iCloud. This is an official uh, Mac. It's, we're just loading the newest version of the OS on there, and you can sign into your iCloud account absolutely no problem. Next up is FaceTime and FaceTime works great. You can use that built-in iSight camera or you can use an external camera through those fully functional USB ports and both of them work great. I made a few calls and uh, everything worked just as you would expect. Next up is that shared clipboard and that works just fine. You can copy things on your Mac and paste them on the iPhone, copy them on the iPhone, paste them on the Mac. That worked just as you would expect, as does handoff. You can hand off, uh, you know, web pages that you have open on your mobile device and open them on your Mac and the other way around. The handoff that I could not get to work, which is new in Ventura, is handoff for FaceTime, where you can start the call on your iPhone and pass it off to the computer. I couldn't get that working. Uh, if anybody has gotten that to work on these computers, please let me know down in the comment section below. Maybe there's something that I just didn't have set, but I tried a few things and couldn't get that to hand off from the iPhone to the MacBook Pro. Stage Manager works very well. You can activate it, set up your different application groups, switch between them, do all that stuff that they showed you in the videos. It all works on here. Now it is a little bit glitchy because when you switch between those different applications or application groups, you'll see kind of a black border behind the windows. It just lasts for a second as it's switching, but uh, it is there. Otherwise the functionality is just fine with that feature. Next thing I wanted to talk about is Sidecar. And if you don't know what that is, this is the functionality that lets you use your iPad as a second display for your Mac. And that does work, but it's kind of glitchy. The screen is pixelated. You'll see kind of glitches every once in a while. It does work. It shows up as a second display. You can drag things back and forth between it, treat it just like a second display. But whether it's hardwired or you're doing it wirelessly, it's not as smooth as it is on a uh, newer computer, but if you just have things that you need to reference over on that second display, it should work fine for that. But if you need any kind of clarity, uh, it's not gonna fit your needs in that regard. Now, two things that do not work are continuity camera and universal control. Continuity camera is the ability to use your iPhone as a camera on your Mac with just the built-in functionality within the operating system. Now, it's really weird because sometimes I can get my iPhone to show up in the list of available cameras, but I've never gotten it to work. Sometimes it doesn't show up at all, sometimes it shows up, but when I click on it, the, it never switches over to my phone and doesn't actually use the camera. So that feature doesn't work. Uh, again, if anybody's gotten this working on these computers, let me know down below. I tried a few things I found online and uh, just can't get it to work. That's kind of the same story with universal control. Universal control is the ability to use the trackpad and keyboard or mouse and keyboard on one machine over to another Apple machine. So you can use your trackpad and keyboard on a MacBook Pro and just drag it over and it connects to your iPad and you can navigate around your iPad with that, those same devices. And it's just not working. They don't see each other. I've tried it both from the iPad with my keyboard case to the uh, MacBook Pro and from the MacBook Pro back. It's just not working. I use it over on my M1 MacBook Pro. It works absolutely no problem. So have everything set up on the iPad. I have everything set up on the 2012 MacBook Pro, but those just don't see each other. I have a feeling it has to do with the older hardware that's in here. And this might be one of those limitations of the older Wi-Fi and Bluetooth that I mentioned earlier in the video. Now, before I get into specific hardware, I wanted to talk about performance, and for the most part, it's pretty good. Uh, there are definitely some slowdowns in this one. Uh, this is the first time that I've used OpenCore Legacy Patcher on a, a newer operating system on this 2012 MacBook Pro, where I saw some significant slowdowns. One of those is definitely within the settings. Uh, menu, everything gets very, very slow within the settings menu. And even kind of navigating around, things are a little bit sluggish. Using the stage manager, like I said, that does work just fine, but it's a, a little bit sluggish. It's not uh, exactly a smooth experience. So if you're one that really wants that, you know, completely snappy performance, you may want to hold off 
on doing this upgrade because there is a little bit of sluggishness. Now this is on the i5 version of the MacBook Pro. I've upgraded the RAM to 16 gigs and I do have a fast SSD in there. But if you have the i7 version of the 2012 MacBook Pro, it may work a little bit better for you. But on this i5 version, it is definitely a little bit sluggish. I do get asked a lot about production apps. So I wanted to make sure I covered some of those areas. I tried GarageBand for audio. I did uh, Final Cut Pro and DaVinci Resolve for video and then Affinity Photo for photo editing. And I also tried out Xcode. Now actually all of those work very, very well. Uh, Affinity Photo, again, you're kind of seeing a little bit of the sluggishness, but it did work very well. Uh, GarageBand worked just fine. I was able to load some loops in, do some sequences, even record some external sources. That worked fine. As far as the video editing, I just did some 1080p editing. I didn't go full 4K or anything. And with Final Cut Pro, it was super smooth. I was able to load those in, do color correction, add transitions, and everything stayed very smooth. I did that with DaVinci Resolve and I did see a little bit of sluggishness. For the most part, it played through fine, but as soon as I added some color correction and things, uh, it did start to slow down a little bit. I think the reason for that is DaVinci Resolve is very dependent on GPU and it's a pretty weak GPU in this computer. It's just an older architecture and it's weak by today's standards. So uh, I was getting a little bit sluggish. It wasn't a great experience. If you're gonna use this for video editing, you probably wanna go the Final Cut Pro route. As far as Xcode, I'm not a developer, but I was able to load it on here, do some basic compiling, and it seemed to work just fine. It didn't give me a complaint that it wasn't supported or anything. Again, if you're doing heavy coding, this is an older architecture, it has an older CPU, so uh, you may wanna look at something a little bit newer for coding. You might have a little bit better experience, but in a pinch, you can get these super cheap now, so it will work. Now you know I always have to throw in a section about gaming, and gaming is kind of what you would expect on this and what I've talked about in other videos. You know, it's just got the integrated GPU, it's got a slower CPU, things slow down even more uh, with Ventura. Like I said, things are a little bit sluggish. Gaming does work, you can load Steam on here. Some games work, some games don't. Any graphically intensive games are not gonna work very well. If you're doing cloud gaming, that actually works fine on here, especially if you use that ethernet connection. If you're hardwired, uh, you can play some of those cloud gaming services on here and that works very well. As far as native games, you know, if you want to play a lot of games, don't get this computer just flat out, but it is capable of playing some games. All right, so that about sums up my testing. I try to take into account things that people frequently ask me on these kinds of videos and cover those. If there's something that you were curious about that I did not cover, please leave that down in the comment section below. Either I or somebody else can answer that. And if there's enough things that I didn't cover, I can do a follow-up video and you know, do a whole new set of testing for stuff that people were curious about. If you found this useful or informative, please hit that thumbs up. If you really liked it and you want to see more, please subscribe and hit that notification bell. And I will see you in the next video. Thanks so much for stopping by.